Mrs. Reagan, the Vice President, and Maureen Reagan. Women's Equality Day. This, this 64th anniversary of women's suffrage is the day, August 26th of every year, that we celebrate Women's Equality Day. And I can tell you over the years, I've celebrated it in a lot of different places, celebrating the accomplishments of many different groups of women from women serving in the military, to women in large corporations, to community action groups. And this is really exciting to be celebrating your accomplishments today. You're great. The idea for this came about six months ago when I was discussing one night quietly with a relative of mine who lives here the incredible energy that occurs whenever any group of the women who serve in this administration get together, and how incredible that energy would be if they were all together in the same place at the same time. And he said, what about the South Lawn? <laughs> and here we are. At that moment, it never occurred to me I would be a part of this program today, and I am only a part of this program today because I'm filling in for my very dear friend, Barbara Bush, who is helping with the delivery of a new grandchild imminently. And so I have the profound honor to introduce to you today the Vice President of the United States, George Bush. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Let me simply say that I am just delighted to be here. Barbara is very sorry she's not. She's worked with many of you in various capacities. But I would simply like to thank those that my office has worked with on regulation, on foreign travel, on so many areas. And I often think of when Atlanta had that difficulty, the president asked me to see what we could do by coordinating the bureaucracy to see if we couldn't help Atlanta when it was traumatized by the death of those black kids. And it was our high-level women appointees who rallied around there, as they've done in every other thing I've been working with, I think now of our interdiction of narcotics, the keen interest that the women appointees have in that, and the extra mile that you all go to accomplish what the president has set out to do. And so I really just came by to get a free meal and to say thank you, <laughs> thanks to all of you, and my special thanks to Mrs. Reagan, who's made all this possible. Thank you very much. I'd like to extend my warmest welcome to you also. You're part of the largest number of women ever to serve in an, an, an administration. It's hard to say. And I think you're the most distinguished. Now, we all know that 
behind every successful woman. <laughs> there's a man. So it's my honor to present to you the man behind our individual and collective successes, <laughs> the President of the United States. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you and welcome to the White House. I want to thank each one of you for joining us here today. And I want all of you to know how grateful I am, as George expressed it so well, me too, for all that you've met and all your contributions to our administration. Now, I know it's a little warm and I know it's August and here we are and that reminds me of a sweltering hot day in my boyhood uh, on a Sunday morning going to church and the preacher handled the situation very well. He said, I am going to preach because of the heat the shortest sermon you've ever heard. And he said just seven words. If you think it's hot now, wait. <laughs> No, I'll follow his example. I'll do a little more than seven words, but I'll try to keep it short. Today on this Women's Equality Day, we remember the history of women in America. We celebrate all the gains that women have made. During our early years, women cooked, cleared fields, harvested crops, raised the children who would go on to make us the greatest nation on earth. Yet, while in those early difficult days, Women were partners in hard work. In many other respects, their value and dignity was ignored. In many states, it was difficult for women to get a public education. In the working world, women were prevented from holding most jobs. Worst of all, women were denied our most fundamental right, the democratic right to vote. As America became a more mature and thoughtful nation, all this began to change. The suffrage movement at the turn of the century had a profound effect. World War II broke down many of the barriers that women used or used to confront in the workplace. And the 1960s gave rise to a women's movement that has made all of us aware of the rightful role of women in our society. A role that includes full access to the professions and complete equality before the law. We still have a long way to go but already American women are finding opportunities that their forebearers never dreamed of. Today, two-thirds of women between 25 and 44 work in paid positions. Half our college students are women, and growing numbers of women are doctors, lawyers, police, and military officers. You know, I can't help thinking that women like you, women who have accepted the burdens of government service and worked so successfully to give our country a new birth of freedom and vitality, show clearly just how much American women can accomplish. For example, take a certain woman, <clears throat> I think her name is Maureen. Uh, <laughs> Maureen's worked in radio and television. She's promoted overseas trade, has run for political office, and today she's helping her old man communicate to women all that our administration is trying to accomplish. <laughs> now, not related, but very close, is our ambassador to the United Nations, Jean Kirkpatrick. Ambassador Kirkpatrick has raised three sons, written five books, and holds a professorship at Georgetown University. And in her own words, let me quote, my experience demonstrates to my satisfaction that it is both possible and feasible for women in our times to successfully combine traditional and professional roles. All that is required is a little luck and a lot of work.
But one of my proudest days in office came when I appointed Sandra Day O'Connor to be the first woman on the United States Supreme Court. And she, too, illustrates all that the modern American woman can achieve. Justice O'Connor has brought up three sons, pursued a brilliant legal career that has ranged from private practice to service as the Assistant Attorney General of Arizona. Today, she's setting an example for all our daughters as one of the highest ranking women in American history. Because of the sweeping and exciting social changes our country has undergone, it no longer makes sense to talk about a great divide between women and men. There you go. There are no longer any men's issues or women's issues, just issues that concern each of us as Americans. And that's why it's our policy to benefit all Americans, and to do so not by raising taxes or multiplying regulations or fattening the federal bureaucracy, but by promoting economic growth. Growth is good for everybody. And tomorrow morning, I can't tell you the details, it isn't fair, tomorrow morning there will be some information that will be released with regard to our growth in our economy. And believe me, it will be continued good news. The economic expansion that our policies produced has already distinguished itself as the strongest sustained economic expansion in America since 1949. And not even during the boom years of the 50s, when our nation was providing millions of new jobs and achieving unparalleled industrial strength, not even then was our economy so vital or our progress so rapid. And as this expansion provides new opportunities for all Americans, it's giving American women a powerful lift. Last year, women filled almost three quarters of all the new jobs in managerial, professional, and technical fields. Today, the number of women-owned businesses is growing three times faster than the number of those owned by men. And over the next four years, we'll work to promote still more economic growth and still more opportunities for women. I just have to believe that together, we can make America a place where women are free to pursue careers, raise families, or both. A place where women not only succeed, but do it with style. You're probably wondering why I didn't stop at seven words, but I couldn't get in all I wanted to say if I had. But now, Thank you for being here again, and God bless all of you, and I guess it's time to picnic now, after we have our picture taken.